Hello everyone, and welcome to what's going to be a very short video today. I've always used just a mouse and keyboard for KSP, and recently I decided I would give a flight controller joystick a try. This video is going to feature what's possible when you use a joystick rather than just a keyboard. To do this, I've put together a racing plane. It uses a lot of stock aerodynamic trickery so we can go real fast, a heat shield so we don't burn up while doing that, and a big set of control surfaces at the back so we can actually turn the thing. You'll notice that my game looks quite a bit different now. I'm trying out some new visual mods, but still this is stock parts and physics. To save mass and drag, I've strapped this thing to a very large array of solid rocket boosters so we can get off to a flying start. And because steering isn't really an option when the SRBs are going, I've strapped it to a wheeled vehicle so we can aim it for the takeoff. To give my flight controller a proper test, I'm going to take this plane to the River Kangxi northeast of the KSC. I'll put the precise coordinates in the description. For the route, I'm going to start at the small flat island outside the mouth of the river, fly up the river canyon under an altitude of 200 meters, then turn around where the river ends in the mountains, and then make it a round trip. The plan was to get some familiarity with the new controls by strapping this whole thing to a plane and flying it to the island. This took quite a long time, so we're just going to skip to the island. This river has some seriously twisty bits, so taking the turns appropriately is going to be really important. I'm going to be going wide on the entry and exit, and then right on the inside in the middle of the turn at the apex. However, turning this is going to be a little bit more like racing on skis rather than racing a car. I'm using aerodynamic pressure to turn, which means that if I turn hard, I'm going to be losing speed. And as a result, my exit speed on tight corners is always going to be less than entry speed. This is pretty much the opposite of what you want to do in motorsports, where you brake before the turn, get on the throttle through the turn, and maximize your exit speed. Maximizing exit speed is still going to be critical here, and look for me trying to minimize the amount of speed I do lose throughout the corners. To start things off in a hurry, I have 24 seconds of solid rocket booster divided into five stages of a little under five seconds each. This will get me up to near orbital speed. I do want to stay under the course ceiling of 200 meters, but I want to get very close to this limit so I can clear the spit of land that would otherwise block my straight path into the river. The first corner after I get into the air breathing phase is going to be a very high speed corner, so really important that I maximize my speed throughout it. So I'm wide on the entry, come all the way to the inside of the corner in the center, and then wide on the exit. This will give me as much speed as possible going into this high speed turning section coming up. These are all very shallow corners here so I can keep almost all my speed. It's really important that I try to get around this next bend really tight because the next corner after this is going to be the second tightest corner in the whole course. Really important that I go wide to the outside and then get all the way to the inside here and then all the way to the outside. I did lose more speed in that and I had to because I did take the apex a little too early. I'm going to stay on one side and avoid having to roll because that limits how tightly I can turn S corners. I'm going to try to pick up speed through these corners here, which aren't so tight, and then into the tightest corner in the course. That one I took very well, got the apex right in the middle, and kept as much speed as is just about possible there. Up here, I have to clear some obstacles in the river, so I have to stay very close to the ground to stay under my 200 meters. And then coming up to this ledge here, I'll have to climb out of the course limit of 200 meters, and roll into my turnaround. The turnaround is the one part of this that this craft is really not so good at. It's a little bit unstable at low speeds and only really flies well when you're going over about Mach 2 or so. Coming out of this, I want to dive quickly back down into the course so I can make sure I do the whole river. I almost crashed into the water, but was just able to pull up in time. So, I have a little bit less mass now, so I should be able to take these corners even tighter and lose even less speed. Very tricky going the opposite way to stay over those obstacles and still do the turning I need to. Coming up here is the tightest turn again. I was able to keep even more speed this time, even though I didn't apex it quite as well. Due to my lower mass, I'm really able to pick up a lot of speed through this section, which is going to make the next tight corner very tricky. Again, really important that I get as close to the center of this as possible. The closer I get to the inside, the more speed I keep. Next is the high speed section. It's really all high speed turns from here on out, so we're going to be staying right near the max speed of this craft. All, however, it's still important that I minimize the speed I'm losing because I realized at this point that I was actually close to running out of feel. So keep an eye on the amount of delta V left. Again, this is now going to be the highest speed corner in the whole race so far all the way to the inside, wide on the outside, 
and then I have to see if I can find the river so I can actually land this properly. Landing is going to be a bit interesting. You may have noticed earlier that this does not have landing gear. I do, however, have some parachutes, so it should be possible. I'm actually going to fly a little bit to the right of the river because turning is the best way to slow this down. So when I get close, I'm going to turn hard to the left, which will allow me to slow down extremely quickly. I don't even want to know how many G's that was there. I'm sure it was hundreds. And then pull the chute at just the right moment and touch down safely. After waiting for it to stop wobbling around, I stopped with an elapsed time of 3 minutes and 36 seconds. This was far from a perfect run as we saw. I think it is possible to knock another 10 to 15 seconds off with this specific design. And with some optimizations in design, maybe even a little more than that. I really loved using the flight controller for this. This absolutely wouldn't have been possible with a keyboard. It's really important that I was able to make fine adjustments, not just using all the pitch I had available. Uh, when you use a keyboard, you'd end up scrubbing a lot more speed than you would have to through the corners. I'd love to come back and try to do a perfect run here, but I have other projects I want to work on first. I'm rebooting the Odyssey by Bill series, and I'm also working on that orbital mechanics tutorial that I keep postponing. Thank you everyone very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.